ID Cooling has been busy lately, or at least it seems so because they are like releasing product after product. And the one we will be talking about today is the ID Cooling DX240 Max, their all new high performance 240mm AIO. But before we begin, let's do some ass whooping. ID Cooling calls this thing the Max, probably because of its thickness. They claim to have a 38mm thick radiator. And now look closely where they are measuring those 38mm. In their defense, the radiator is indeed a bit thicker than the norm. I measured 32 millimeters, so still 5 millimeter thicker than most other ones out there. But making the claim to have a 38 millimeter thick red just because the in and outlet is standing out. No, just, just no. It's like saying 400 millimeter tubes are extended. No, they are not. That, that's like the bare minimum. But enough nagging for now. The DX240 Max comes in the usual type of box. Inside we'll get the 32 millimeter thick radiator with its outstanding 38 millimeter thick radiator ends. Two of ID Cooling's in-house made fans, installation hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, some thermal paste, a PWM extension cable, and two of those tube organizers to keep your tubes old. Tidy. Ignoring the initial marketing hiccups, it's quite a, a well-made AIO, I would say. The 400mm long tubes might be slightly on the shorter end, but they used a higher quality sleeving, they are adjustable at the water block end and reinforced on the other one, the radiator fins do not feel like I can bend them by looking, and I counted about 20 FPI, but for me, the most promising part are the fans. They got that stepped inlet design, I wonder where I heard that before, some rubber for additional noise absorption, and they got a PWM splitter attached to that 10 cm long cable, which you can use in combination with the extension to control both of them using a single plug. Something that is slightly cool about this red and fan combo, because both ends of the red are slightly elevated, leading to this obvious marketing fuck up. Anyway, because of that, the fans are like lowered into the radiator and to me that looks kind of cool. Obviously it doesn't limit your, your choice of fans, or at least I am not aware of any fan that wouldn't fit in here, but compared to a regular 38mm radiator the whole thing isn't as thick. Actually it's just 32mm from the red plus 25mm from the fan that add up to the 57mm and a half total, which is quite a lot less than the for example, 63 millimeters that you would need for an Arctic liquid freezer 3 or 2. And the fans aren't weak. At max 2150 RPM, they can push up to 85 CFM at up to 2.83 millimeters of H2O. But at the same time, they are yelling at 32.5 dBA by spec. More on that during the benchmarks. The water block pump combo is a design choice. We got an up to 2900 RPM 3 pin voltage controlled pump hidden inside this grayish plastic housing. On top of that we got the design part, a group of straight lines that are shining from like within the block. All of that is controllable via a 3 pin ARGB plug, including a splitter. If that fits your design preferences, cool, but what I can say objectively is that this thing is like really fucking bright. Even with my 500 watt skin inducers blasting onto them, the light comes through, which is kinda Im impressive. And below we got a 54 by 54 millimeter copper base with rounded edges. Overall it looks Simple, all black, with a touch of RGB, it feels like a higher end product. And now before we get to the benchmark charts and, and the noise, the noise. Uh, let's just quickly cover the installation. To get the DX going on Intel, we need to position the provided backplate behind the motherboard and screw in the double-sided screws from the other side. Nice looking side up. The retention brackets go on top with the ends pointing towards the CPU and then screw them down using their thumb screws. Of course, this is Intel, so you can switch the orientation to have the tubes come out on whatever side you prefer. Over on AMD, we actually have two mounting mechanics. Well, first, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the double sided screws, the same ones we used before, and then we get these two brackets here. The long ones are if you want to have the tubes come out on the top and bottom of the chip, and the short ones are for left and right. The long ones are meant to be bending outwards, whilst the shorter ones are meant to go inwards. After you've made your choice, screw them down and then for both AMD and Intel, thermal paste, slap that bad boy on there and screw it down. With that out of the way, let's find out if Mac stands for Max Performance or Max Disappearance. 
appointment. First up is testing on Intel, a 13900K to be specific. There we got three workloads, 120, 250 and 320 watts, all of which are starting off with the fans at 100%. And then we slowly work our way down whilst noting down the above ambient package temperature as well as the noise along the way. Oh, and the pump is always kept at 100% all the time. Starting off at a gaming like 120 watts workload, there the ID cooling DX240 Max didn't do too shabby. At 30.8 degrees C above ambient, it's actually stuck against the block of really, really thick or bigger AIOs, but overall 30.8 degrees C isn't a bad result compared to lower end alternatives like the NMX Aquafusion 240. On the flip side, however, we also have a few outliners into the other direction, like the Hyperflow from Montag or Iceberg Thermals 240 model. And now let's talk about noise. I think I do know what Max actually stands for. Now, to be clear, it's not like the DX240 is unbearably loud for an average level of cooling. Take the Height Q60 for example. Yeah, that one is just going out of the graph. Even if that thing was a really, really cool concept, its noise to performance ratio is just, well, it just wasn't impressive at all. That said, the DX240 Max isn't breaking any records either. Compared to the Montego or Iceberg Thermal AIOs, it's just not quite there. On then on the flip side, however, it's definitely better than, for example, an NMX AIO. Compared to higher-end air coolers like the NHD 15 G2, it looks relatively competitive. They are somewhat close to each other in terms of noise to performance, up until the moment where the D15 G2 just gives up, but the ID cooling DX240 Max just keeps going. Over at 250 watts, the results change slightly. Now all of the previously tested AIOs have moved closer to each other, except for the NMX AIO, that one is gone at this point. And at 57.4 degrees C above ambient, the DX240 Max actually outperformed the Montec 240 this time. Seems like the thicker radiator is finally starting to do something. But unfortunately, noise is still a thing, but it's not that bad. Compared to the 120 watts workload, the differences between the results haven't really changed that much. It's still slightly behind the Montec AIO, though now a tiny bit colder at the max. And up until a certain point, the DX240 Max keeps up with the most expensive air cooler that is out there, and from there on it just continues for quite a lot longer. At 320 watts, we are basically just benchmarking the cold plate and observing how long each cooler can survive. And at 78.2 degrees C above ambient, it is not bad at all. Sure, there are 240s that were able to go lower than that, but the Montec one, for example, just didn't. And so have quite a few bigger radiators. So size is really not everything at this level. The corresponding noise to performance graph is basically another copy, again, outperforming the Montec in brute force at the cost of noise and somewhat comparable to a D15 G2 until that one dies off. And now onto AMD, where we benchmark on a 7950X3D, where we measure the average clock speed across all cores, whilst lowering the fan speed slowly and slowly again, and combining that with noise. But before we get to the results, a quick note. A month ago, we already used that machine for some coolers. However, because the previous settings were being extremely reactive to the ambient air temperature, I had to change the settings in the meantime, which basically means that this table just started off at zero again. That said, the results are somewhat like the Intel ones, slightly in front of the Montec 240 AIO at the cost of noise, and once they match in performance, the Montec just takes over. On a side note, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3240 performed miraculously well like very, very well on an X3D chip. I haven't benchmarked any other LF3s on AMD yet, but it seems like the LF3 series is like way better on AMD than on Intel. Performance as a whole, average. Average at best, considering this is a 32 millimeter instead of 27 millimeter thick radiator for both AMD and Intel. But it's not really the, the raw performance I'm worried about. It's, it's actually the noise of the fans. Now, to be clear, there are things that are way more brutal than the, the fans on here. But the AIO could have been in a much, much better spot if ID Cooling just tinkered for a bit more and found, found a way to like shred off a dB or two that would have worked so, such big wonders for, for any benchmarks. On a brighter side, the DX240 Max isn't expensive. I wasn't able to find it here in Europe, but on Amazon US it goes for around 
80 USD, which really isn't that bad. So yeah, at least there's that. Okay, where do we stand? It's average. It's <laughs> it's max average for an acceptable price. If you're just gaming or uh, doing some work, everything below 250 watts, so let's say 14700K, a 7900X or even a 7950X if it's a 3D one, it will do. Just make sure to set a fan curve to, that uh, jumps up at the very last moment to not get that like loud noise throughout your whole experience. And then you will be happy with it. Just don't expect like max performance. It's just not, it's, it's average. But okay, this should be everything for the ID Cooling DX240 Max. And at this point, a huge thank you to ID Cooling for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to help ID Cooling with their copy. I, I spotted some mistakes. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Icepack Thermal 240 AO. That one was a, a real outliner. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.